Hey everybody, Monica with King's Titan Homestead, and I'm here for a quick book review. Keeping ducks and geese. Are they little cuties? I love, I love ducks. So, um, I was introduced to Muscovy ducks, and I really love them. They are giant birds, um, but they're very quiet and they wag their tails and they talk and they, I mean, they, they just kind of like have a, a way different form of communication. They're not loud like a lot of ducks. And something on the homestead that, I mean, I'm going to be the first, we eat meat here. And so my original group of Muscovies um, that I got from a breeder, um, I was, I'm not going to eat those. Those are not my food ducks. Those are my parent ducks um, and I'm going to raise the young and harvest the young. Um, choice young. Um, it's been years <laughs> and I haven't seen a single little duckling. I mean, they're just, I'm like, what is going on? So I told myself this year that if I didn't see any ducklings, I was going to have to pull the ducks off the farm because, I mean, they're expensive to keep and um, really quick, if you don't know Muscovy, and I will show you pictures of some of my babies, um, but the Muscovy is a basically a very heavy breed duck. Um, the hens lay an average of about 70 eggs per year. And what's really cool, I'm gonna quote out of this book, um, since its discovery by the Spaniards in Central and South America before 1500, the Muscovy has been exported all over the world. So this duck was discovered around or before 1500. Um, it's a different species from the mallard. Crossed with other domestic ducks, it becomes, it forms a vigorous and fast growing but infertile hybrid. So one of the big differences on these Muscovy ducks is they're not a greasy bird. Um, if anybody's tried duck meat and they didn't like it, a lot of people that don't like a greasy animal or high fat content animal kind of shy away from duck. But Muscovies, they're like eating sirloin steaks on the grill. And I mean, who doesn't, you know, if you're a meat eater, you usually like sirloins. Um, so Muscovies are a very um, highly prized meat duck. With that said, that's what I've been trying to raise. And um, here, Muscovy females, significantly smaller than the males, lay around 70 large white eggs, make excellent broodies and mothers. The incubation period is longer than for other ducks, 35 days, um, and both males and females make very little noise. They're good foragers and need protein in their diet. In the wild, they catch crabs, fish, and termites should maybe let them loose because we do have termites around here. Uh, but they do fly. <laughs> so I would have to cut their wing, trim their wings. Um, some drakes sh should not be with kept with other domesticated ducks. Watch their behavior. They can harass females. So that's just a little bit about the Muscovy. But now back to my problem. Why am I not able to raise any ducklings? And this book gave me the answer as to why. And because it gave me this answer, when I have been asking all kinds of um, backyard forums, homesteading forums, um, chicken forums, I mean, I've been on all kinds of different forums going, what's wrong with my eggs? And nine out of 10 people don't even read what I post. They just basically jump right in there and say, it's because your eggs are not fertile. And I'm like, no, you're not listening to me. My eggs actually get to this stage right here. Right here. I'll open them up and find out why the egg is dead. So it says day 27, the air sac has grown because water has been lost. That's supposed to be normal, right? But why is my duckling dead in there? So let's go over to incubating eggs. Must lose water. 
It basically says that eggs which lose insufficient water are often dead in the shell and have not drawn their yolk sac into their body. That right there, that's a big one. The yolk sac is still outside of the body when this is happening. I've got this big air sac and the yolk sac still sticking out of the poor little, poor little duckling. It says there are a number of reasons that affect this delicate process of water loss. One, the porosity of the shell, which varies with breed, diet, and age of the bird. The relative humidity, and this is what I believe is the issue. Moisture of the ambient atmosphere during incubation. These birds are from South America, Mexico, a little bit more in the tropic areas, and my birds, um, they have a swimming pool, but I've never seen my broody hens go for a swim. I never catch them with wet underbellies. Um, I think my eggs are dry. And so I'm thinking that maybe I might have to go in there, you know, and miss the area or something on that, you know, like day 25 to 35 or something. I'm not sure, but this is something I really should, you know, experiment with again. Um, and basically, you know, then the other thing is the size and type of incubator, which doesn't apply here. And why, I mean, I live off grid. I uh, don't have electricity at night. We're running a generator right now. Um, we're still not set up with solar. Um, that's, woohoo, we're gonna work on that. But, um, so, you know, if we want a fan or something at night, we just run a 12 volt battery with a little inverter. Um, I guess I could try doing that. I could try having a little incubator and doing a little group of eggs at a time, buying an inverter, buying an extra battery system. But why? What is so difficult? I mean, what did the homesteaders before me, what in history, historically, how do people raise ducks without an incubator? Come on. Do we all have to have incubators nowadays just to raise farm birds? I think not. So maybe it is just like what I've been saying with duplicating the conditions for certain plants that are not native to the area. Maybe because these ducks are not native to the area and my hens are not going for a swim and they're laying in, one of them was laying way up high in a chicken's um, brood box. And she pulled out a bunch of feathers and she put that made her nest. The other one, she was just using dirt. So, and some feathers. I mean, she pulled some feathers, but not, not a whole lot. She was mostly using dirt. I was giving them all kinds of different things and they just kind of would kick it out. You know, they just didn't even, they didn't want it. So I don't know. Do I try again or do I give up? Oh, <laughs> But I'm gonna highly recommend this book, Keeping Ducks and Geese. Um, I don't know anything about geese, but there is some really great, um, they, she touches base um, with all the different varieties. Um, actually, uh, Chris and Mike Ashton wrote this book. Um, they touch base with all the different varieties. They touch base with all kinds of different raising ideas, you know, all this stuff. Um, I'm gonna give this one a, definitely have it in your homestead um, library. Um, nobody sent me this book. I think the copyright of it is uh, 2009. Um, I found it at uh, a yard sale. Perfect. So as you can tell, the ducks even drink out of those little cup things that go on to um, the five gallon buckets. And what's really nice about that is you don't have to worry about how dirty they make their 
their um, swimming pool water. Um, I mean, they dirty that up so quickly. Um, so that all the birds have nice fresh water. I use those five gallon buckets with those little, it's not really a nipple feeder or nipple waterer, but I can't remember exactly what they're called. Anyway, um, they're cheap and they're, they're, you can find them everywhere. Um, so basically in those five gallon waters though, sometimes I put apple cider vinegar, organic um, apple cider vinegar in those, just a few drops um, for uh, their basically their gut flora. And then I also add some essential oils such as um, oregano into it because it's a natural antibiotic. So those are all of the different kinds of things that I do with those five gallon feeders. Most everybody is going through molt right now, but as you can tell, he's got his feathers coming in. But these are the Muscovies, and they are extremely quiet. And this is to show you, this is a, a male is in the foreground, that boy right there, and then here's one of his females. And this is pretty much what they do. Their swimming pool's getting changed, so um, there's probably gonna be some excitement here pretty soon. The other thing I'm thinking about doing is I'm probably going to separate my birds um, just for breeding purposes, um, you know, so that we have more food, you know, possibilities. Um, basically, I've got everything in here all at once. You'll see I've got a turkey um, right there. Um, but there's my two drakes. Muscovy drake there, and here that big old bad boy over there is another Muscovy drake. And then look at how pretty some of my females are. She's already gone through her molt, and she is just bright white and gorgeous. Where this little lady right here, she's just starting to go through it. And that lady back there really needs to, uh, she looks like she's, um, uh, just beginning. I mean, not even. Let's see if we can get some, uh, see if we can get some talking going on here pretty soon, which is so, I love listening to the Muscovies talk. Well, I got a guinea fight going on. You two. Somebody must have said something. Look at the females trying to get involved. Uh, it's like they're encouraging them. Are you guys? <laughs> Come on. Ow, that hurts, dude. Let go. Let go. Owie, owie, owie. Yeah, I'm going to have to find a home for her one of those males. Okay, I just busted up guinea fight. Um, so one of the points on that is um, your basically drake to hen or rooster to hen ratio. Um, and my Muscovies are like right at that minimum level of like four hens to one drake and that's like the minimum and you can kind of tell uh who what hens belong to what drake and hey children <laughs> good grief i'm definitely gonna be separating out i've got um some more um coops and fencing coming in tomorrow somebody's donating so uh that's kind of a good thing but uh, I've definitely got a guinea imbalance going on. I can't believe how quiet the ducks are being today. What about you, dude? You gonna start talking? bad boy? You gonna start talking to me? 
Oh, he's not sure what's going on. I think he's a little bit mad. Look at that face. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he's mad. That's a mad duck. Dude, what's wrong? I think it's because of the guineas. They probably upset him. Something that I have to do with the Muscovy ducks every now and then is trim their toenails. You can see how long that they get. I guess the hens are talking to each other. I got some talking going on back there. That's pretty much the communication. Tail wagging, very quiet. The guinea hens are, of course, the loudest. The chickens are the second loudest. And then my Muscovy ducks, they're actually the quietest. There's a difference between a male Muscovy and a chicken right there. Oh, look at how pretty she is. Look at the blue. What a pretty girl coming in. She's been through her molt. Oh, pretty girl. Purple tints, greens, blues in her.